Hello, and welcome to part one of the lecture for GS 104 on Thursday, April 2nd, 2020. So what I'm going to do in this segment is begin um, looking at a particular argument about climate change and showing how affirming the consequent inductively can be used to build a cogent argument showing that a scientific explanation is highly likely to be correct. So first, let's ask the question, what if a scientific explanation flunks a test? So the way we test scientific theories, remember, is that we say, OK, if our theory is correct, then if we take this kind of measurement, this is what we should see. And what happens if that's not what we see? So here's an example of an argument that could be made. Uh, if Earth's climate is really warming, then the area of sea ice around Antarctica would have been decreasing for the past 40 years. Well, if we look at the graph on the bottom of the, of the screen, we'll see that, that is not what happened. They've been measuring since 1979, uh, and they have found that the area of ice around Antarctica has not overall been decreasing for the last 40 years, except for the last three. It sort of crashed, um, so we're not quite sure what's going to happen with that. It could be part of a fluctuation, but overall it's been actually slightly increasing. So. This is the form of this argument. If P, then T. So if P is true, then T has to be true. Uh, but T is not true. So now the question is, do we have to conclude that P is not true? Do we have to conclude that Earth's climate is not really actually warming? Well, it turns out that if both of our premises are true, the if p then t part and the not t, if they are both true, then that would totally sink our hypothesis that Earth's climate is warming. Okay? But the problem is that it may not be that it's true that if Earth's climate were really warming, then the area of sea ice around Antarctica would have been decreasing. Okay, That premise may not be true. Um, it may be something else that is influencing the Ar Antarctic sea ice, making the area of it actually increase. So as we speak, scientists are trying to figure this out, because it's been a puzzle for a long time. But what's really also been a puzzle is why in the last three years did the amount of sea ice suddenly decrease? So they're trying to figure this out, and they're realizing that it's a little bit more complicated than just saying if, if the climate is warming, then we're going to decrease the amount of sea ice steadily everywhere. So in Antarctica, that's not what's been happening. All right, so it doesn't totally necessarily sink our theory. It is bothersome. Uh, it's a problem. It's something that absolutely has to be figured out. Um, but in the meantime, we have tested the theory that Earth's climate is warming in a lot of other ways. So one flunk test isn't necessarily going to sink the whole thing, because we have lots of other lines of evidence that support our theory. So let's say you have a theory that has five legs to stand on. You've got five really good arguments in the form of affirming the consequent inductively that support the argument. So if you lose one leg, there are still four left. So it still can be a very well-supported argument. So what I want to do now is look at the main legs that are supporting the theory that Earth's climate is warm. What's, what are the main lines of evidence? So first of all, 
an obvious thing to predict would be, well, okay, if the climate is warming, we should be able to measure that warming with thermometers. So this is a graph that you've seen quite a few times. Um, this is a compilation by NASA where they got weather station data from all over the Earth since 1880 and calculated an average global temperature from that and then plotted it relative to the average between 1951 and 1980. And so here's what they got. So if you look, you will see that indeed there has been an increase of about one degree Celsius, slightly more than that, since 1880, and really actually since the 1970s, we have had that much of an increase. So the average global temperature has increased more than one degree Celsius since 1880. So we have an argument if P then Q. If Earth's climate were really warming, we should be able to measure it with thermometers. We did measure it with thermometers. We cannot say, therefore, P is definitely true, therefore Earth's climate is definitely warming, because that would be affirming the consequent deductively. But inductively, we can say, all right, our theory may be true. Our evidence is supporting the theory. Okay, so we have one leg now. We have an increase in global average temperature that has been documented. All right, well, there's another test we could run too. And that is, it's not just the air temperature just above the surface that should be warming. The oceans should be warming also. And they should be warming to some depth, not just at the surface. So if we can measure the heat content of the oceans, we should see that that is increasing. Now, if we just use sheer temperature measured at the surface of the ocean, we're not looking at the whole picture. So what we do is we have a whole series of these floats that have been deployed. Um, we have actually more than 4,000 of them that are floating around in the ocean all over the world. And what these things do, they're actually very sophisticated instruments. They measure temperature, they measure salinity, and they move around with the currents. So as they move around, we can tell what's going on with ocean currents. They have um, radio transmitters on them, and so they will periodically surface and um, transmit the data and then they'll go back down into the water and keep measuring. And each one of these can do this for five years or more. So here is the status. There are 4,074 of these things all over the globe now, constantly measuring what is happening with temperatures and other factors in the oceans. So here is a study that was just published late last year um, that looked at the data for, collected between 1990 and 2018. And so what they found is that by measuring very slight changes in temperature of the water at various depths, they can put all the data together from all the different floats and see how much heat energy is stored in the water. And they have documented that there has been an increase of about 300 zeta joules of energy stored in ocean water. So a zeta joule, I had to look this up, is one sextillion joules. So that's 10 to the 21st. So just for reference, one food calorie is 4,184 joules. So joules is the standard measure of energy in science. OK, so they have um, the st study that was just published in science last year is the blue line. Um, there's other lines that have been put together by other scientists and we get a very clear signal that there is an increase in the amount of energy stored in the ocean water 
over time. So this is just from 1990 to 2018. Um, and there is some indication from time before that where the data are not quite so great. Um, and then what they have done is plugged it into a model and predicted what's going to happen in the future. So the purple is what would happen if all the countries of the world got together and very aggressively started decreasing the amount of CO2 that they were emitting. So then we would get a temperature increase of about 0.4 degrees Celsius. If we don't do anything and we just emit as much CO2 as we feel like, then the orange line is what will happen. So that is 0.8 degrees. So you might think, well, that's not very much. But if you think about how much water is in the oceans, two-thirds of the Earth is covered by this ocean water, and how much energy it takes to heat just a little bit of water, we're talking about a tremendous amount of energy that's being stored in that water. And an increase in temperature of 0.8 degrees is very significant in terms of marine life and in terms of Earth's climate and weather and storms and that kind of thing. All right. So we predicted that if the climate were really warming, the heat content of the ocean should be increasing, and indeed it has been increasing. And what we've actually found is that 90% of the excess energy that um, is the difference between the energy that comes to us from the sun and the amount of energy that leaves the Earth's surface, that difference in energy, 90% um, of it is being absorbed by the oceans. Okay. What about other legs, other lines of evidence? Well, the other ones I want to talk about have to do with ice. And so I'm going to take a little bit of a detour and talk some more about ice on Earth and its importance and how it works. So the scientific term for that is the cryosphere. The cryosphere is those portions of Earth's surface where water is in solid form. All right, so if you look at all the ice in the world, there's different kinds. Um, what I want to talk about first is glaciers and ice sheets. So glaciers are all of these yellow areas on Earth. Um, they're found in mountainous areas. And ice sheets, that's this big white area here and this big white area here. Those are the two big ice sheets that exist on Earth right now. So what are those things? Okay, so glaciers are fields of ice that flow downhill. And they're made of compressed snow. So just little snowflakes falling on the surface that accumulate and new ones come on top and they pack down the old ones and eventually it all becomes very solid ice. And if there's enough of it, it is capable of flowing downhill. You might have heard the term glacial speed. Well, it doesn't flow very fast. Um, we measure it in meters per year, um, but it does flow downhill. You can see some flow lines on the surface of this glacier here. Okay, so that's a glacier. An ice sheet is just an extremely large glacier, so large that it doesn't just flow because um, part of it is uphill from the rest of it, it flows under its own weight. So here is the Greenland ice sheet. And here's a cross section of that. And there are 3,000 meters of ice piled up over the central part of Greenland. So three kilometers of ice, that's two miles of ice piled up uh, forming this huge mountain, basically, and that ice is flowing under its own weight, flowing outward toward the edges of Greenland. Okay, so the next segment is um, not something I made. Um, it is a YouTube video that was made by NASA, so I would like you to watch that segment next.